Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. On the agenda tonight, we're going back to Dimash, who I featured last night. This is going to be a performance of the same song that I looked at last night from 2019. And this one is a fully live vocal. And I just want to address a few things before I start, because people that don't watch this channel regularly might have thought that, and they definitely did think that, out of all of the Dimash videos, I chose a backing tracked mimed performance to feature, whereas what happens on this channel is that people request videos for me to look at and videos for me to analyze. And that's exactly what I do given my background as a professional musician and a singer and songwriter and teacher and all those other things, producer. So I analyze videos from different angles and it just so happened that last night was a bit of a banana skin because somebody just gave me that video to look at and I do a new video every night by the way and I have been doing that for over two years now. So it just happened to be the one that popped up. So from that analysis perspective, I've got to address everything about the video. So I will mention if a video has auto-tune or if it is a mind performance, if it's a backing track with live vocals. There have been other videos that I've done that have been a live band, but with recorded elements that the drummer's playing to with a click track in his ear. I try to explain how it's all done live. I think another thing that happened yesterday, when I was researching the videos on Dimash after having watched the initial one I was sent, YouTube started suggesting other Dimash videos from Russia, the same venue and similar venues. So they were all lip synced, which is what I understand now, thanks to Jasmine Gardenia commenting, and thank you for all the information that you guys have supplied me with today. I now realize that in Russia, it is a standard thing to lip sync and mime on TV. And that's totally the opposite from here in the UK. But now that I know that, it makes sense as to why all the videos I was watching were lip synced and were the studio versions is because YouTube was giving me similar suggestions over and over again. Thankfully, today, the Dimash fans have given me some real videos where it is just Dimash singing and sometimes totally out of the orchestra and performance setting, but him just singing on a sofa. And I wanna have a quick look at that because there's so many interesting things that I can address now having access to these live videos. When you listen to a band and they are lip synced, it's disappointing, but it doesn't cause an emotional reaction in terms of anger. It's just something that you have to accept sometimes it happens. And it's important to point it out when it does happen because and this is the main point, that singers like Dimash are so good. When they sing live, you have to know the difference between live and pre-recorded because other artists that are nowhere near as good as Dimash could be compared with him because of their mimed performances when people can't tell the difference. So it is such an important thing to distinguish and it's not having a go at a particular artist. It's just letting people know this is pre-recorded. So you've got that awareness. And when you do then hear something live, it really puts Dimash in a totally different league to everybody else. It's also a really dangerous thing, in my opinion, to accept that everything is live. If you don't analyze things, you'll never learn to start with. That's how singers like Dimash and previous classical singers, but singers of any genre, have got to where they are is by analyzing other singers, seeing what they're doing, listening to their technique and trying to replicate that. And Dimash for sure would have had a vocal instructor, somebody that he's been learning since the age of five, how to sing, getting all the techniques. And his teacher wouldn't have been born with all that information. It comes from analysis and figuring out what other people are doing. So analysis is such an important part for everyone to grow as an artist. And that's why we get so many amazing artists with such diversity. It's exactly the same with guitar players that I feature all the time on this channel. You'll never speak to a top guitarist and they tell you that they weren't influenced by anybody. They weren't inspired by anybody. They just know everything they know and they play and that's what it is. 
They've been analyzing other guitarists for years and years and years and then bringing that into their own style. So it's something I want to stress that these videos are analysis videos. So hopefully you guys can watch it and whether you play guitar or whether you sing, whether you're in a band, just something that you can pick up from these videos that you didn't know previously, whether it be guitar techniques or vocal techniques, anything that will help you in your own artistic journey. And if you're not an artist yourself, then it's great to get a deeper appreciation of what separates these top artists and how they are so brilliant and unique in their own way because of the techniques that they've taken on and the way that they've mastered them. So now that everybody knows about last night's video that in Russia it is a standard practice to mime, I've also heard people saying that Dimash was under contract and he had to do these performances as well, but I think that fact validates last night's video in terms of the content is absolutely correct. We now know for a fact that it was set up that way because that's what happens. So objectively, it is all correct. And having that emotional response is a natural thing. It's very difficult to turn that off. I know that a lot of people that did comment today because of the analytics on my channel, I can see how long the video has been viewed for and a lot of the comments that came in that were an emotional response were after five to six minutes of the video and it was a 25 minute video and for the most part, I am talking about Dimash and his vocal technique, his control, his support his ability to hit notes, how he can do it. And I think a lot of people didn't watch that far into the video, so they missed a lot of that information. With all that said, let's get Dimash up on screen and check out a live performance from earlier this year. I'm just gonna jump in here and the link to this video is gonna be in the description below for you guys to watch it without me interrupting it. But with Dimash's voice, 
If he wants to sing live, just let him sing live all the time. He automatically throws in expression of being just behind the beat intentionally with his vocal delivery. Another thing to look out for in this performance, we've actually got it here, an insight into how Dimash sees his voice and sees his notes. When you're singing, Mental imagery is a massive part of learning to sing and where the notes are, how to access those notes and where to bounce them off in terms of your resonance chamber that you've got up here in your head, where to bounce those notes in your head in order to get them consistently. And this is actually a great still of the video that we've got here because the way that Dimash holds his hands, look at, he's imagining either the place that he's focusing that note in his head or he's imagining his vocal cords. And it's something to look out for when he's singing live. Obviously, the video last night, there was none of this because he isn't imagining singing it because he wasn't. Whereas with this live performance, watch his hand movements because there is so much in there to how he is seeing his vocal cords and the way that he's getting them to react to the thoughts that he's having. It's another thing you'll see Dimash doing is he'll go from an open hand where he's got a fuller sound with a lot of resonance and when he gets higher up, he starts to do this with his hand. It's something that you'll see from a lot of singers where they want to get a really light connection in head voice or chest voice and they just lightly press their thumb with their first finger to replicate the lightness of those vocal cords coming together. So throughout this performance, look at Dimash's hands and the way they change with the notes because it's a fascinating insight into his mental imagery when he sings. I mentioned yesterday about the way that Dimash can have a little bit more air going through his vocal cords to get that expression. At two minutes and 48 is a great example of that where he is singing that note in head voice and it sounds like it's on a cushion of air, but the air isn't really affecting the note. It's still a really nice clean note, but just a hint of consistent air underneath it. It's such a difficult thing to do, but Dimash throws this kind of thing in just on a whim, just naturally live. And it's so amazing to hear the different textures that he can produce with his voice in a live setting that are just off the cuff and he'll just do it for how he's feeling at the time. Another thing to look out for in terms of this mental imagery is the way that Dimash later on in this composition, he connects and disconnects his vocal cords and he just hits the same note with that gap in between. And at that point in the performance, he always, in every performance that I've seen, and thank you everybody for sending me so many performances today, he shakes his hand in time with the connection and the lack of connection, breaking apart those vocal cords, and he's doing it perfectly in time. It's something that I haven't seen him not do. So it's one of those things that he is doing. It also works as the showmanship aspect of the performance. Another thing that Dimash just throws in there seamlessly, but having that mental imagery of the cords connecting and disconnecting and having the timing of the hand I wouldn't be surprised if that is another mental image that he's got of those chords connecting and disconnecting in time. And it's almost like he's controlling it with the movement of his hand. But let's get back into the performance.
then we get into this little instrumental section and who now is watching his hands when he goes to that really fully supported chest voice sound and he really leans into it he's got that open palm down low as if giving himself that support mentally and then when he gets even higher and he starts pushing into that sound he's now on his chest trying to feel that resonance again it's that mental imagery and when he sings a little trill with his voice getting such impressive vocal cord flexibility if you watch his right hand by the way Dimash is a multi-instrumentalist he plays piano and it's really interesting to watch on those trills and a trill is more than one note consecutively sung or played and you can have a trill between two notes and while that's happening Dimash is doing that with his fingers as if he's playing the piano so he's literally imagining playing piano with his vocal cords and that same sound is produced in terms of the flexibility he's got the ability to jump from one note to the next as if he's playing a piano I'm not going to be getting into all the stuff that I spoke about on last night's video in terms of hitting pitches and the pitches that we have in this particular song the range the journey and the techniques with air and support and everything that I mentioned last night but there are so many interesting things here that I can add to this live performance that we won't necessarily have time to get into everything that I mentioned last night as well. The other thing is with a live performance the amount of variation you get from a vocalist when they just throw in little lines that you're not expecting from the studio version it just embellishes the song so much more to hear something slightly different but sung with that live expression and feeling that you can really tap into with a live performance and a fantastic singer they communicate to you through the performance at that very second that you're watching them and this is why live performances can't be beaten when you're watching a guy of this quality and this vocal ability approaching that point of miming and lip syncing and singing live the whole time sometimes you will have a singer who either has to cancel a show for their vocal health or they have to mime and this is something that certainly Dimash his vocal cord integrity is the most important thing in the world so if Dimash is feeling ill and he feels like he can't hit the notes and in order to hit those notes he would have to strain the wise choice for his career and his vocal cords is to mime or cancel a show sometimes if you are under contract he will have to mime so it's another thing to take into consideration again looking at it objectively these are the things that happen but let's get back into the performance have it who noticed at the end the final note of the song the way that Dimash holds his hand and gets that 
mental imagery of that light chord coordination in head voice, there is so much going on here. And this video is so impressive on a vocal level, but also there is so much that you can see in Dimash's performance in terms of his mental approach to singing that you never get with a mind performance or pre-recorded performance because here Dimash is not only artistically singing in such an impressive way, the expression that he's got in his voice, but he's painting a picture literally with his hands in terms of the connection that he's got with his voice. And you can see the way that he's moving his hands around depending on the place vocally that he is in terms of his range, but also the body of the sound. And he'll turn his hand out towards the audience when he's adding a little bit more into the sound in terms of body, when he's getting a lighter connection with his vocal cords, he brings his fingers together. The other thing that people might see this as is showmanship. They might think that all of these movements are just putting on a show and they certainly make it more entertaining. But once you've done a little bit of vocal training and worked with imagery in terms of trying to imagine those vocal cords doing different things, immediately I went to this shape because that is a light configuration with your vocal cords and a lot of singers out there will know exactly what I'm talking about. Everybody's different in terms of what they do with their hands. Some people when they sing they raise their hand up and down in this kind of fashion in order to hit pitches. It is like you've got a vertical piano almost. Some people have a horizontal piano that they imagine hitting pitches higher that are further away from them so their arm stretches out and if they're hitting a high note with a light coordination, their hand will come out and they'll make that light connection hand gesture, but it will be far away from them because they are high up in their range. And when they bring it back down, they bring it towards them. Some people go up with their hands, some people go down. It's different for everybody. But it's amazing to see Dimash in a live setting showing us his artistry and how he paints his picture mentally of his vocal cords. I've just queued up another video because this one was sent to me today as well. Again, thank you guys for sending me all of these videos. But this is Dimash just singing while sitting on a sofa. And there's also another part afterwards where he's singing with his head voice. He goes up really high in his range, but you get such an appreciation of his resonance. But Let's get into this video and appreciate Dimash just singing a cappella, but also so many singers would never do this because it is so revealing about somebody's voice. But let's get into it. <laughs> And there we have it. So first of all, sitting on the sofa, having that support that he's got. By the way, everybody that sings will have heard vocal teachers talking about your support mechanism and to stand up, keep your back straight and you lose 30% of your support around there when you're seated. So Dimash is just sitting down, so he's losing a lot of support there with his diaphragm, but he's still able to lean into that sound. He's got such control. The other thing you'll notice is his application of that really wide vibrato that you always get in classical singing, but also the way that he tones it down. It's more prevalent in that second video when he goes really high in his range and the resonance that he is getting out of his head is crazy to the point where the microphone is starting to clip because those sound waves are just bouncing off his natural amphitheater in his head 
and they are coming out of his mouth at such a volume and everywhere else that the resonance is such an impressive thing to hear with really low-tech mics because this hasn't been set up to try and make him sound good it gives you a true appreciation of his vocal ability, his vocal technique, but also the resonance he is able to achieve. These techniques that you can just sit back and appreciate the level to which Dimash has got these down and not in an overproduced setting. So feel free to go back so feel free to go back to last night's video and skip that first quarter because there is a lot of vocal analysis going on in terms of talking about airflow and how Dimash gets these notes in the first place and how he achieves his sound. Thank you guys so much for suggesting so many videos today and for your feedback in the comments section. This is one of those nights where I have handpicked a couple of videos to look at just because I thought it was important after last night's video. But keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think and if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one.